Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in to our monthly unboxing and showcase of the latest and greatest products from the tech and the smart home industry. Now this says, stop in the name of love. It doesn't say that. But actually, this is a pretty exciting package of stuff from Zoos. Let me get everything out of the box and then we'll talk. Today, we're gonna be going through the Titan water valve, the double outdoor plug. Here is the outdoor plug. And this is absolutely brand new. It is the new Zoos power strip. And when I did a comparison of the power strips very recently, all the smart ones out there, I didn't include this because it didn't exist. They had an older one right off the bat with this S2 power strip from Zoos. I'm pretty excited about a few things. Now it's max 15 amps. And what I'm seeing that has me just a little bit excited other than the Z-Wave communication to your hub and some little manuals and some other stuff. But what I am excited about is the green box. So I finally got to it here, but I'm excited that each of these are individually controllable and they are controllable on the device as well. So those buttons will work. Plus you're gonna have app control. Now having compared so many of these power bars, there's a couple of things I'm really excited for off the bat. This is a, you know, it's gonna kinda come out to the side. So this isn't gonna cover both of your outlets on your wall. We've got a full on and off. Plus we've got actually a reset for what is, it, it must be a surge protected bar. We also have, there's five different outlets plus a max of 2.1 amps coming out of our two USB ports. Plus they have mounting hardware on the back, which is always a good option. Now, here are some really wild things about this. The USB ports say no Z-Wave control on them, but there's some really interesting things going on with these buttons. Now, it says one click for on off. Okay, that seems fine. Three clicks to add or remove. Six clicks to change the LED mode. And 10 clicks to reset the kilowatt hours record. Now that means we got power monitoring on this whole thing. Now I can go click, click, click and hold for a factory reset. And I can click, 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 click and hold to disable manual control. So you can even get those buttons to no longer work. There's quite a bit going on in here. Uh, and we haven't even got into the app and the, the different control things that we're gonna get out of this power bar. Now, the one thing I'm not super excited about, Zeus, I gotta tell you, a little bit of extra distance here between the outlets. That would have been nice. It's gonna depend on the, you know, the things you're plugging in here, but that could actually severely limit what you can plug in this. That's the only thing I'll say for this. Sometimes the layout, it's better if it's just a little bit longer, but overall, this is a wonderful design. Hello, Automators. This month's unboxing and showcase video includes some new features I want to try out. You'll notice this little graphic here when we're listening to the sounds of tech. Plus, I've included a blooper reel because I actually spend a ridiculous amount of time with each product messing up or learning about the product. Now, probably the biggest thing that I got was some feedback from some of you that you wanted to understand a little bit more about each device. So I created the aftermath section for some of the more important products or products that I see more in line with what Automate Your Life is all about. So within each of those, you'll understand what I found with the product over a month of use. It's kind of like a mini review. And the product we just looked at was the Zoos Zen 20. And I don't think I could be happier with that power bar other than with the outlet spacing. The energy monitoring is fantastic and Z-Wave means I can pretty much put it anywhere in my home. Plus I have the triggers for energy monitoring in SmartThings, which is the hub I'm using it with. So that's one I can definitely recommend. It's time for the Titan. 
Now this, they've had this for a little while, but the Titan is a water valve actuator. And actually the box says that it's coming with its own leak probe here. Smart start, we've got a QR code, and then it, it's basically uh, pairing again properly. Uh, ah. So this can be used with any half inch to one and a quarter inch uh, ball valves, okay? So you can see the little diagram there. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes. Please read. Always close the ball valve before installing your actuator. Good manual, which you're gonna need for something like this. This is not just your average install. Here's our leak detection cable. So it's got its own, but obviously with pairing to most hubs, you're gonna have a lot of leak detectors, uh, really different sort of leak detector there. I'll say that much. Power adapter, and I like that we've got kind of the twist on uh, method here of connecting. That's gonna keep things water sealed at the very least. We've got the adapter right there, O-ring. I don't know what that is. Some kind of gasket or O-ring. I don't think it's a gasket. We no longer need this. Now, I, you know, seeing this thing in person is a whole other ball game. Like I've seen it online, but whoa. Okay, so the way this is gonna go, and I'm gonna show you as I do it on mine, this is a Z-Wave button. It's an inclusion or an exclusion button on the top of this actuator. What you're gonna do is uh, there, there's a spacer here if you need it. That's what that is, it wasn't a gasket. You might need that here actually on the bottom. Then we're gonna put these clamps uh, around our pipe and you're going to have already closed your water off. Then this is gonna basically have the handle sitting in here and it will turn the valve for you, right? There's gonna be a calibration process, so you'll have to do that. But otherwise, this is really, really, probably the easiest installation uh, I have seen of a water valve actuator. And with it being Z-Wave, Z-Wave Plus, and from Zoos, everything feels really high quality here. The aftermath story of the Zoo's Titan is that it was a little scary to calibrate the device and there was a moment I thought it was gonna break my valve, but that was me just being a little bit nervous and it was properly doing its calibration. Otherwise, this is a top-notch product that was easy to install, configure, and use. Plus, with it being Z-Wave, it'll actually work in my mechanical room. You'll have to think about a battery backup for its power supply, but other than that, it's pretty close to perfect. It's time for an outdoor Z-Wave smart plug. You gotta love that. That whole line right there. Got a manual, got some mounting gear, and we got a smart plug. Now this is a one-to-one -one outdoor plug. We can pop open the compartment. There's a push button on it, and that's it. Here's your little mounting. So you're just gonna go like that, plug her in, it's gonna kinda sit like that. And then you close up this compartment if you're not in use. Once again, 700 series, we've got the right security QR codes for pairing into our hubs. I gotta say, I like all of this. I'm liking how the cable feels. This is very light here, but it wouldn't need to be made of much to do uh, kinda all the same things that we would expect a smart plug to do, just outdoors. Double outdoor plug. So we got a double plug up to 80 watts per outlet for like LED and string lights and stuff like that. Uh, you can get 15 amps across the whole thing or small pumps up to a third of a horsepower between two outlets. So don't go getting a couple of third horsepower motors and trying to run them off of this thing. But this is the Zen 14 and we get mounting hardware, the little manual, and we have just like the the regular outdoor plug. This is gonna offset a little bit. Nice construction on here. We've got mounting uh, hardware and we've got a mounting spot. We've got a button to turn everything off. So that's one button to control them all. And then we have the two outlets. They are labeled outlet one and outlet two. So thing one and thing two. And if you're not using them, you've got uh, the, the covers 
But these covers, I'm not in love with those style of covers. I don't know how you do it any better, but I'm not in love with it. I don't have any good options for them. I just, I'd like to say, I don't love it. Is this because it's so skinny here? Uh, I feel like you could break that after a hot summer. It's just gonna kind of break, I think. But otherwise, it's a controllable dual plug that can handle motors stated to handle those inductive loads again, which is fantastic. And it's Z-Wave Plus 700 series stuff. Ready? I'm ready. Now, a little disappointing that I did not need my knife, but let's get over our disappointment quickly. Paper, box. All right, what do we got? Oh. Let's start with the dimmer smart switch. We'll come back to this other stuff, but this is probably the most exciting product, or at least the product that I was the most excited about at CES. Whoop, whoop, Ooh. We get a wall plate and then we get the switch itself. Plus we get some mounting hardware and a couple of manuals. Then I could throw everything else away. So nice and clean installation that we would go through. So you can see the plate is here. They have a battery tab, so I'm assuming as soon as I pull that out, we're gonna get a little bit of a light on this thing. Yeah, I've got some lights. We've got lights, people. Let's break this down, get it all ready, show you how easy it is. Now, that was obviously good sounding ASMR. And then basically you're just gonna pop that out. Now we've got the main plate that's gonna hide all of the, the screws and stuff. And you're gonna come put this over and you can screw just actually through the two of these uh, right like that. The battery in the back of this is a 2032. You have on and off buttons in the middle and then this is brighten and this is dim. Quite simple. And now the nice thing about this is it's basically gonna pair with this other stuff. So uh, you've got, you've got a, a light bulb here, you've got a smart plug here. They also have wired switches within this lineup and this is going to pair as kind of an extra control. So you can put this anywhere you'd like. And I mean, even here, if you want, I think you could pop this out. So pretty simple stuff. I'm gonna move that to the side. Let's get to our light bulb. It says a full color reveal smart bulb. All of these do not require a hub. That's one of the nice things. Now the older, <laughs> that was a bad throw. The older GE stuff, I didn't have much luck with. So we're gonna try this out. We're gonna see if it can hold its connection. Um, but so basic light bulb. This is gonna be Wi-Fi based without a hub, Amazon and Google control here. Nothing too much to talk about. And a smart plug. Now, I never mind getting a smart plug. I can always use one. We always get these little manuals. I like GE manuals, to be honest. They're pretty good. And we get a crazy crab walker. Let's go for the sounds of tech. Good size smart plug, you know what I like about using GE products is they understand electricity. So right on here they're saying the max amperage is 15 amps. That's nothing new, but they're also saying a third horsepower motor. So they're talking about inductive loads that can be used with this. I'm sure there's some more details here in the specifications about maybe how long you could do that for, but when they're giving you a rating for an inductive load like a motor, that's a really important thing that starts to get you away from those exploding smart plugs that I've told you about before. Over the last month, I've actually been relatively impressed with GE in its ability to stay connected and the ease of the GE Sync application. Drawbacks for this system are obviously that they are Wi-Fi based and that your automation options are fairly limited as it just connects to Amazon and Google Voice Assistants. One neat feature of this is that some of the GE Sync products can be set up directly in the Google Home app without needing the Sync app entirely. Custom, but like K and a U and an S and a D-O-M, limited? Aw, oh, 
DigiNest Pro. This is the 100 watt DigiNest Pro. Now this looks like a big old power adapter of some sort. Make charging an art. I didn't know you could do that. Let's get diggy, getting diggy with it. Huh? That's pretty good. <laughs> oh guys, oh, I don't know if this is an art so much as a, oh, where do you see this? Ready? Look at this thing. That is wild. Okay, here comes the other side. Look at this. Okay, so there's there's feet on the bottom. There's a button on the back that I assume is gonna be for turning the whole thing on. We've got USB C1, C2, and C3, and then a USB A. Now I don't know why they've kind of graphically connected these two right here, the USB C3 and USB A. Okay. I kind of get it. These two look like they're made for kind of phones and mobile devices. And then this one's, I think they're bigger, they're bigger capacity. Plus we have two full, uh, full power plugs here with the ground. And then we have just like a light one up here at the top without the ground. And this whole thing, like look at this cable. This is what shocked me when I first got this thing open. This is wild. Look at this cable. I gotta do the math here, 100 watts. Now each outlet has its own uh, wattage and amperage and things like that. So you, you really have to pay attention to what you're plugging in, but just like, look, look at this cable. That's what was shocking me is, is this cable, but it's a 15 amp rated cable. So this is literally an extension cord uh, in most senses of the word. And it's a, it's a wingspan. This is a wild thing. Okay, now I believe that the box, what the box said, which is make charging an art. This is art. I kind of think I know what's going on here. I mean, in life in general, I don't. You know what I did need are some track curtains to compare to Akara's uh, track version. So let's see actually what you get in the track version. In the past, I have opened up the, uh, the curtain rod version, cause that's what I have in my home. But I bought some like, you know, like Ikea curtain racks and then I'm just gonna use those in some testing to really compare the two because Akara has their new track version. And I think, you know, I've seen a couple of comparisons and I'm not feeling like they're really in depth enough to, to give you the clear indications on which one you wanna buy. This is, obviously, this could be for a solar panel or it can be for charging, seven, eight feet. Now this is the iRail version. Now in the past, you could actually switch between iRail and U-Rail versions. So I liked this or the intention around this design. And you can see here, you just snap it in and then you're supposed to be able to pull those out as needed and then switch, right? So we have the roller for the actual curtain to move along. And in the back, you have the pairing button plus the USB-C that you can plug into. And they have the solar panels they sell with this. Plus you can just charge regularly with that cable. U-Rail. Now this says U-Rail 2, and I didn't know there was a second version of the U-Rails. I only knew about the second version of the uh, curtain rod version. Now, there shouldn't be much difference here. Our manual again. Here's our cable, same cable. This is how you build the model spaceship. Do you guys remember building the model uh, spaceships? You would kind of break out all those little pieces or that was in board games, I think, too. I tell you, kids these days, they just don't know what they're missing, do they? Now there are a lot of accessories. So this is a this is a clip. Open it up, clamp it on, click it down. There are also these little fellas. I don't even know that I can show that here. Now with the U-Rail, you're getting a bit of a different attachment. So there is how this all connects. So what I need to do is get one of these out, split it apart, push that in. Yeah, and it clicks in. And then clickety click, same deal. So, and you saw, we can put any of these two 
into these. So now I have I-Rail and U-Rail for testing versus a car off. Now, this is a super different product. I'm betting there's nobody out there who's seen this product before. I haven't seen this one until they reached out to us. Now, they're gonna stretch my French enunciation or pronunciation, so I'm not gonna bother trying to say their name. I'm excited on this. Whoa, what is going on, man? So this is called the Sedna water leak detection uh, or detector with a perimeter cable. On the side it says NeviWeb, SmartThings and Hubitat and it also says it's Zigbee 3.0. So this is a Zigbee water detector and this is a seven foot long perimeter cable that's gonna go around. Now I don't know which end is gonna go into the leak detector just yet, but either way, this is a really different uh, cable, a, a leak detection cable. I've never seen one that is this sealed, but it has a really different construction like there's a little black and I'm guessing that's the detection wire. Now I can see on this sensor, very small uh, footprints or not, not like super small or anything, but I see a couple of batteries in there. So I'd be able to break into this to change those batteries. And then I have some mounting and because we're doing everything with a cable, this can pretty much sit anywhere. So I've got the mounting uh, screws or I've got the 3M tape. It's pulled off the cover, it's a little magnetic cover. Really nice design going on here. And it just says Zigbee 3.0. Now, I wonder if I can link this just direct to some of those hubs. I'm gonna try that, I'll let you know. I've got some mounting stickers, some extra mounting stickers. I've got some mounting hardware in case you want that. I've got a little quick start guide. And then I've got some, oh, I've got some mounting hardware for the cable itself if you wanna kind of manage where that's going exactly. They've got little stickers on here and then obviously you can route the cable through that. Now that's only one component of this system that I've been sent today. So this is the flow sensor from the same company. A flow sensor is pretty much one of these types. There's, there's a few different types like an ultrasonic and this is looking just like it basically moves the little more or less fan in there as water goes through your system. And then the speed of that is gonna tell you how much flow is going through there. Pretty good for water. You're not having to do uh, much in terms of kind of changing the measurement. And they tell you which direction the water needs to be flowing in for this to work. And then it just looks like a pretty simple connection point. I'm guessing to the water valve. So this has got to be close to your water valve. You got a little bit of threaded plumbing work to do here. That's not difficult stuff for, for most people. It'll go up to 250 PSI. Its range is four to 45 liters a minute. That's right, this is a company from Quebec. We use liters. And I've got a guide in English and French. Gotta love that. And we're on to the big boy. This is the actual valve itself. This is something that I'm going to have to do some plumbing work in order to install. But I can also see that this is working with Amazon and Google right here on the box. Something that's become immediately clear is you could have multiple of these uh, leak sensors here. You don't just have to have one. Okay, well, I got, okay, one, two more leak sensors. I can see that they have the spot for the leak detection cable. So if they uh, sense anything, and then this looks to me, it's a Zigbee. Oh, it's another type of leak sensor. Wow, I don't know what the cost is. I imagine it's pretty high, but uh, right there, you can see the two leads. So this is just a sit on the floor type of leak sensor. This is one you could get additional cables for your perimeter cables. So there's a couple of different types of leak sensors and the fact that they sent me five, six, six? I can do math. Six of these things in one package says you can cover your whole home with this system. So I like that. We've got some mounting hardware, some mounting stickers. This is another one. So this is another style of leak detection with that same cable. So there we go. I've got that absolutely deluxe. Got a little power adapter. I assume that's for the water valve itself. Now the device itself 
has a open and close buttons on it. So you'd be able to physically do that. The DC power adapter is back here. So this is gonna be how it looks on my installation. This is threaded inside here and there is a PN rating on this of PN16. Plus it says DN25 in case you wondered that. So I plugged the thing in. You can see just some some lights on here. We've got these two buttons on the front and then I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna hit the close button. Nice and smooth. I didn't feel anything vibrating or moving outside of this compartment. I didn't even feel this compartment vibrating. So nice and smooth, exactly what I'm expecting. And that you would kind of call that a ball or a globe valve even. It's, it's surprising how they did that in there actually. And when you feel inside of here, you can feel it's kind of a rounded curve. This helps to, to break some of the pressure as things close off. You would end up with a little bit of water inside that ball that's essentially been formed in there, or globe that's essentially been formed. So both sides of it, you're feeling that. Now, obviously you're gonna create those automations in the app. I'm gonna see how all that works. And then we're gonna get some of these leak sensors working with this. The aftermath story of this set of products is that I can't install two out of three of them without getting a plumber in. So I won't be doing that here. Uh, however, I love the battery backup option on the actuator and I have tested the valve's communication over the month. It works great in the NeviWeb app, but when I brought it over to SmartThings, that became a cloud connection. This company does have other Zigbee versions that will go right into your hub. So that would be something I'd probably suggest if you wanna use SmartThings or Hubitat. In terms of the leak sensor, other than being really expensive, I was really impressed with those. And the battery life is extremely high. Plus that perimeter cable is such a useful feature for large spaces. And you could just cover that space with one big sensor. So if you're using two or three today, then you might be able to get one of those and it does directly pair with those hubs. Welcome to this month's blooper reel. I hope you guys enjoy how wrong I get things sometimes. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh. This could be neat. I'm actually excited for this just based on how it looks. This is a portable horde, horde drive. <laughs> I feel like this might be a good massage ball as much as a, a security camera. Leak detector probe included. <clears throat> Ready? Oh yeah. Oh, wait. Some, some kind of gasket or O-ring. I don't think it's a gasket. Not gaskety enough. Gaskety is a technical term. Uh, yeah. Stuff. It's a technical term. <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna stand. In case you didn't know what a stand looked like. It's a flute. Doot, 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 doot. Whoop. Ooh. The old college try here, and then we're gonna move on. I can't take that out. I'll get it out later. Not that one. Nope. Not the giant saw. Nope. <laughs> okay. It's a little jiggly. Wiggle, wiggle. What's the what's the TikTok? Wiggle, wiggle. I can't remember. I can always use one. Came back at me. Uh. 100% of the time you plug in the USB A the wrong way. Ooh. I get bubble wrap. I get bubble wrap too. Of monitors. Uh, or man, <laughs> I've got to these off so we can see inside what kind of valve it is. Where's the valve? But I, like I don't, how does this close? <laughs> What's going on? 
this one's actually pretty exciting and it's a bit of a different thing for a lot of you. Okay, we got a box and a box. Ready? Ooh, oh. This is a lot larger than I thought it was. Oh yeah. This is called the Feutech, I think I got that right, S Corp Mini. And what it is, is a gimbal. Now these always come with a pretty hefty manual because they are a little bit of a complex device. You can get more features or kind of figure out the product. And wow. We'll start with the simple stuff. Now they always give you uh, a stand, right? It's a little box here. This is gonna be the power cable. Whoa, and a lot of other stuff. So we got a lot of different little pieces here. There's Allen keys, there's little components for mounting different cameras and, and making different adjustments. I have all kinds of cables. Uh, the one, you know, like some of these are just charging cables or connection cables, but I'm really interested in this one, which is a 3.5 millimeter and a USB-C on the other side. So I think what we're talking about is being able to connect a phone or a lot of different cameras. Here's the mount. That's a really nice mount for smartphone. So you just kind of expand that and then you allow it to close on your smartphone. These are the plates for kind of the bigger cameras that people use. And I'm gonna use this with the ZV-1 that I showed you last month. And I think, yeah, this is just another base plate. They, they've given you the ability to really uh, control your destiny completely with how your camera's kind of mounted on this. Get the big boy out if I can. How do I get this out? Oh, oh yeah. So now I'm gonna be able to hold this. See, so the camera eventually sits in here. You can see where there's kind of this, this plate here and we've got these other mounting plates if we need them for different cameras. And then basically the whole thing will self balance itself. That's what a gimbal is for. Now this is a really neat unlocking mechanism because it's it's stuck, right? Like it's not going anywhere. Let's, let's do it. Oh yeah. A couple of the, the things that I really like about this specific model. Uh, number one, I can hold it like this. Number two, I can hold it like this. And this is a very common thing for me to want to do is get two hands in there. That gives you a lot more control, a lot less shaking. Now this is supposed to manage the shaking for you, but there's also a dial. I believe that dial is going to be for zoom. I have a little click button here. So I'm going to assume that I can do probably a couple of different things with that. Uh, I've got a power button for the whole gimbal. Let's see if we've got a charge. <gasps> oh, there it goes. So amazing features actually on the touch screen. It, and it, the fact that it is a touch screen is pretty incredible already. So I can actually kind of swipe to go back. And then I have controls here. This allows me to not only move the gimbal itself, but it allows me to move this around this interface and then yeah, the gimbal itself. So I can kind of make it have different angles that it's gonna hold to as I move through the space. So I can switch between these follow modes, keep things moving really quick, how it's gonna move, and then I can kind of slow it down so it takes a little more time. Obviously, I gotta get a camera on here to show you how this is gonna work. So let's do that. So what we're trying to do is for each aspect of the, the ratio here, we're trying to get it such that it doesn't move. Now you can see it's very stable, but I actually have two components of the gimbal fully activated here. Let's see what happens. Really hoping my <laughs> smartphone doesn't fly. There you go, I did it. Now I should be able to, yeah, I can hold. See when I hold the button, it allows me to kind of tilt. Huh? This is pretty good, hey? Wow, is that a smooth gimbal. 
So this is how you get those shots, right? This is, this is how creators get shots and even filmmakers at this point. And you can, you can set all kinds of different modes. Like now I'm just, this, this dial's allowing me to go back and forth. So those are quick pans. This is really fantastic. And there's all kinds of modes on this thing that I'm gonna be able to set up, use, and uh, honestly give you guys better shots. So this is something I'm so excited about. And there's other models from these guys that are much smaller and much more made for like a, a smartphone or a, a smart, a small uh, camera. So you don't necessarily have to get this one. Searching for an entry, we'll make our own. And key, and key, created for security. All it says so far is power DC, five volts. Let's see what we're getting here. I mean, it says security, so I feel like we're getting a camera. Sounds like a camera and it feels like a camera. Ah, yeah, that thing's crazy looking. I feel like this might be a good massage ball as much as a security camera. Inside of the box, we got our table. It looks like a couple of feet, plus a power brick for the camera. We got a mounting adapter, basically, this goes into the bottom of the camera and you kind of twist it in there. So you would screw this into the wall with the mounting hardware they did give you. And then you could take the camera off at any time if you'd want. It does seem to turn that, you know, 200 and, I don't know, 90, or wait, 360, like 357 degrees or whatever it, it is that they do. I like the actuation action that I can get out of this. And then it looks like we've got a microphone port here. Not a lot on the front, but I do see a speaker and then that micro USB. Now there is a micro SD card slot and a reset button on the bottom. And when you look in the manual, it kind of says, okay, download the Anki app. But when you look at these apps and when you look at how the layout is, you quickly realize this is a Smart Life product right here. They're telling you to download the Anki one and that would be their own specific model and you might need it for some of the specific features but one of the nice things about Smart Life and Tuya is that usually you can use that Smart Life app for most of these products. Hello. Hello. Let me give you the aftermath of Anki. This camera works pretty well to identify movement and send notifications. Plus I've been pleasantly surprised with its overall quality and I love that I can use an SD card in the camera. You won't want to trust its human tracking feature and the automations I had in the Smart Life app they weren't what I was looking for, which was triggers on motion or people detection. Still, it's a good little budget option at a whopping $25 for a PTZ camera. Let's go. Let's go. I always like it when I got no idea what I'm getting into, uh, at least when it comes to electronics. Orico. Ooh, I'm actually pretty excited just based on how this looks. It called, it's called Orico and it's a portable SSD, so solid state drive. Now 500 gigs plus it's an external drive, kind of exciting. As a content creator, I always need more space and actually the solid state drive stuff, it's just so nice to have versus, you know, your older type of uh, hard drive. It's the sounds of tech. Yeah, that was a good one, but I get a second try. Oh yeah. Yeah, I gotta say, I love the look of this. I can see there's a little light here. It's a USB-C connection, so that's gonna make this really good for plugging into my PC here. Uh, I got a card. So at first I thought, oh, the manual's not speaking a language I know and love, but guess what? I got all my specs right here. Then they were nice enough to give us, and look at that, okay. So this is actually a really nice thought. So they've given us a USB-A to USB-C, but yeah, there you go right there. So they're letting you go if you've got USB-C in your computer, say you've got a Mac. So if you only had that or you have a PC with a USB-C to USB-C, you can do that. Now here's the interesting thing I'm reading off the specifications. I got an MTQ 10G and that means 
I get 10 gigabits per second in terms of my transfer speed. Now that would be the upper limit or the maximum, but they actually have what looks like some faster ones. The MTQ 40G, which I'm now officially jealous of, gets 40 gigs per second. But I'm less jealous now that I read that the 40 gigabits per second version is ultra high performance version and note, there will be hot situation. So they're basically saying, don't let it get too hot. This one arrived yesterday, which is yesterday for me, not for you. And it would have been some days ago now for both of us, but I'm confused at this point. There's a lot of tape on this thing, but it says LFF and it's a PM 2.5 monitor. I think LFF might be the brand. I, how am I gonna get into this? Okay. So we get a lot of tape on the box. We get a manual. We get a very long power cable. Like I'm betting that's, that's all the cable in the world. Let's see, <laughs> this is a six foot cable. Oh, we've got a display. I did not expect that. Yeah, I've had a lot of good ones lately. There's three buttons on the back, plus there is a DC in, so obviously for this right here. And then I think this is just a PM 2.5 monitor, so it's an air quality monitor. Let's see what we get when we turn it on. So we've got three things on here. We've got a temperature up in the top, a hygrometer, which is humidity, and then in the middle, we have the uh, parts per million of PM 2.5. So very colorful display. I like how it looks. So there you go. Now that's it. This is all you're getting out of this thing. They do give you some guidance for particulate matter, PM 2.5. Uh, they give you some guidance for what you want to see and what you don't want to see. Right now, I'm within what I do want to see. So I'm happy. Are you? I have a question for you. What did you like from today's video? What do you want to see reviews of or set up videos? What do you want to know more about from Automate Your Life? The other thing you're going to want to do is watch the video that's up on screen now, which is our previous unboxing video. A lot of you guys love that one because there's so many interesting products. So check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate Automate.